Uh, hey there everybody, just doing a review for the Greasel T300 portable power station and uh, we're just going to start out by taking a look at the box itself right here. Uh, pre pretty regular box to be honest. It does tell you the uh, wattage of the power station and the uh, power capacity off to this corner right there. And off to this side you do get a uh, general specification panel and uh, off to this side you do get uh, examples of uh, what the power station can power and charge which is uh, pretty cool. And off to this side, not much, but uh, yeah, there's a graphic right there. And uh, that's the packaging for the uh, T300. And in terms of what's included in the box with the power station, you do get a uh, car charging cable, a uh, AC charging cable, and a uh, solar charging cable, which is a MC4 to DC uh, connector, because you can recharge this power station using a solar panel. And also you get a manual in the box as well. And uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the power station itself to see uh, what its features are and what it's like to use it. All right, you guys, so taking a closer look at the Greasel T300 portable power station, uh, the unit does have a 330 watt max output along with a 288 watt hour power capacity. And uh, so it is, it is a uh, pretty small unit with a length of nine inches, a width of six inches, and a height of six inches. Um, and we're just going to do a quick uh, look around of the power station. Uh, at the front, you have uh, most of the functional parts of the power station, which includes all the outputs, the buttons, and the uh, screen. We're going to we're going to get more into this uh, later on in the review, but yeah, uh, let's just take a quick look around. Um, off to this side, you do have the uh, LED flashlight, along with a uh, vent for the internal fan. And off to this side of the back, uh, nothing. Yeah, it's just uh, nothing at the back. Off to this side, there's just another vent for the internal fan as well. And at the top of the power station, there's just the handle that makes the uh, power station a lot easier to hold. And uh, that's about it. All right, and so taking a look at the front of the power station, uh, yeah, this is where you're going to be using the power station the most. To turn on the unit, just press the power button right there. And it turns on the screen and it also shows the remaining power capacity available, which is currently 93%. And if you want to turn on each section of the power station, just go ahead and press the button on each section. And the, the uh, section turns on and it shows up on the screen of the power station right there. And also shows the wattage output real time as well while you're using the uh, output ports. And so with the DC section, you're getting a cigarette lighter port and two DC5521 ports. And to be completely honest with you, the DC section with this power station, and basically any power station, <laughs> is probably the least used a section, um, simply because people don't have appliances um, that use these type of ports, but they're there if you need it. But once again, you're unlikely to use them. But hey, if you got an appliance or a, a device that charges from the cigarette lighter port or, or the uh, DC5521 ports, they're here. All right. And so with the USB section, you get three USB-A quick charge ports, and you also get 60 watt USB-C power delivery port. It would have been nice to have a 100 watt USB-C power delivery port, but once again, this is a low price budget power station. And uh, with 60 watts, you can still charge most USB-C chargeable laptops anyways. And uh, yeah, the three USB-A quick charge ports are able to fast charge most Android smartphones. So that's great. We're going to be testing this section out um, in a second. And with the AC outlet section, you do get only a single AC outlet. I really wish that they added um, two AC outlets to this power station. But I mean, once again, this is supposed to be a low price power station. I think adding two AC outlets would have uh, increased the price quite a bit. Um, but one is just perfectly fine for a 330 watt max output. Uh, and that is the input port right there and to turn on the flashlight off to the side right over here that I showed before Just press the flashlight button and it turns on right there. Uh, pretty nice. Oh And I also forgot to uh, take a look at the bottom of the power station You do get a specification panel along with a warning panel in case you want to read the power station before you uh, use it And you get rubber pads at the bottom as well. We're just gonna get started by using the USB section um for the power station and then we're going to move on to the ac outlets and we're going to move on to the uh, recharging of the power station as well and just see uh, what this power station is capable of all right you guys so for this test i do have all the charging ports being used right there 
So the three USB-A quick charge ports and the uh, USB-C power delivery port at the bottom. And we're getting about 55 watts, as you can see right there on the screen. And so currently I've got a Galaxy Note 9 that is fast charging, a Galaxy A51 that is fast charging, and a LG G7 that is also fast charging, as you can see right there. And right here I have a Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 that is charging from the 60 watt USB-C power delivery port. And that's getting about 26 watts right there. And uh, yeah, that's the charging for the uh, Greasel T300 portable power station. The power station doesn't have a 100 watt USB-C power delivery port. The charging um, section is great. I mean, you can still fast charge three phones and charge a laptop at the same time. And uh, the uh, output of the USB section fits into the overall 330 watt max output. So there's really no um, limits on how you can use the charging ports. And uh, yeah, it performs great. And we're gonna move on to the AC outlet section now. We're gonna plug in um, some, something over here, see how it performs as well. We're probably gonna leave the charging ports um, plugged in. And uh, yeah, let's just keep going on with the tests. All right, everyone. So in this test, I do still have the phones charging and the laptop charging as well. But I also connected this uh, Lasco tower fan uh, to the AC outlet, which is running on level three currently. And uh, the power station is currently outputting about 45 watts from the USB section and about 35 watts from the uh, AC section because that's how much the fan pulls out um, at its level 3 setting. And uh, yeah, this is where the uh, power station excels at the most. I mean, if you want to be outside on a summer day or a spring day and uh, charge devices and also um, keep cool with a uh, fan, fan connected to the uh, AC outlet, uh, you can do that with this power station. Um, and like you can power the fan for uh, countless hours, for probably about five hours or more, definitely more than five hours. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, testing out with the fan and charging devices. And let's move on to the next test. All right. Uh, okay, everyone. So for this test, I do still have the devices charging, which includes the uh, three phones and the laptop. But I also connected this Milwaukee battery charger, which is uh, currently charging up a M18 battery. And uh, you can see the red light is on at the back to indicate that it's still charging. And the power station is currently outputting about 58 watts and uh, still pretty lightweight for the power station, uh, considering that this unit can output 330 watts. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to charge up a battery on the side while you're doing some work outside with a uh, Milwaukee power tools, uh, you can do so with this uh, power station. Let's move on to the next test. Uh, okay, everyone. So I currently have a uh, Ace Cool stand mixer connected to the power station and uh, we're just gonna turn it on set it to its uh, max level 10 setting to see how it performs, how the power station is able to power the uh, stand mixer. I currently don't have any, anything um, in the stand mixer. Sorry you guys, I'm not going to be making any, anything today. But uh, yeah, we're just going to set it to its uh, highest setting, see how it performs. Let's just crank it up to uh, level 10 right over here. And there we go, not bad at all. Uh, and you can, actually, you can actually hear the internal fan is currently on, not too uh, loud, uh, pretty quiet. You can still hear it um, if you're like in a quiet environment, but uh, not too loud. Uh, there we go, and the power station was able to output 120 watts right there. Uh, still pretty lightweight for the power station uh, because it has a 330 watt uh, max output. But I will say with the 288 watt hour power capacity, if you're powering a 120 watt um, uh, appliance, uh, you're probably going to be looking at maybe two hours of usage, about two and a half hours of usage. So uh, just please take note of that. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to do some baking and uh, wanted to use a power station uh, and, you did, and you needed to use a stand mixer, you can do so with this uh, Greasel T300 power station. Uh, not bad at all. All right, let's move on to the next test. Uh, okay, everyone. So for this test, I do have a crock pot connected to the AC outlet. I currently have the crock pot set to high and the power station is currently outputting 200 watts to uh, power the uh, crock pot. And so yeah, if you wanted to keep uh, food warm outside or cook food outside, you can do so with this uh, Greasel power station. 
And um, I will say though, with the 200 watt output currently, and uh, the power station having a 288 watt hour power capacity, you can only power like a 200 watt um, appliance such as this crock pot uh, for about an hour and a half. So just something to make note of because the, uh, the power capacity of this power station is pretty limiting when it comes to powering uh, high wattage appliances. You will get a shorter runtime for the power station. Uh, just something to make note of. Uh, and yeah, let's move on to the next test. Uh, okay everyone, so for this test I do have a 32 inch Samsung TV connected to the power station and currently the power station is outputting about 45 watts to power the Samsung TV and uh, so yeah if you wanted to connect a 32 inch TV you can do so with no problems and uh, actually I want to go outside to test out a uh, 55 inch TV um, that I have in the living room to see how well the power station is able to power that one so let's go check that one out as well uh, okay everyone, so for this test I do have a Samsung 55 inch 4K OLED TV connected to the power station and currently the power station is outputting about 95 watts but I will say that it does jump around depending on what's on the screen because right now I'm, I'm, I have Invincible um, on and since he's about to fly through the city uh, the power usage of the power station does jump about to about 200 watts, even 300 watts depending on what's on the screen and let's just check it out real quick right here. And uh, yeah, there we go, 120 watts, 250 watts. And uh, yeah, so if you're gonna be powering a 55 inch 4K OLED TV, you're looking at about probably an hour of usage time, maybe an hour and a half, depending on what you're watching. But uh, yeah, but still pretty incredible, 55 inch um, TV being able, to p being able to power from a uh, small unit like this, it's uh, pretty great. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the recharging of the uh, power station through this uh, DC input port right here. Let's see how the recharging works. Uh, okay everyone, so right here I've got the AC charger recharging the power station connected to the outlet right there. And it's currently recharging the power station at about 51 watts. Uh, according, to, according to the specifications though, this is supposed to be charging at 60 watts, but I guess 51 watts is close enough. And overall, I think this is the uh, weakest part of the power station, which is the recharging, or at least the AC recharging speed is pretty dis disappointing because um, I think they should have gone higher for the AC recharging um, speed, at least, because for a 288 watt hour power capacity, going from zero to 100 at this speed, you're gonna be getting to full power in about six hours, uh, which is all right, but I, th I think they should have gone um, a lot faster but we're gonna go outside and uh, test out the uh, solar recharging by using a Fantec 100 watt solar panel see how that performs with the power station uh, all right you guys so we're outside with the grease lt300 uh, portable power station and I've currently got a Fantec 100 watt solar panel connected to the uh, power station and currently the recharging speed is a uh, 50 watts basically the same speed as the AC charger that I used inside. And uh, I mean, the good news is that you don't have to spend so much money on a high wattage solar panel, and you can just settle for a 100 watt solar panel to get the most out of the uh, solar recharging for the power station. But of course, as I said, uh, I think they should have increased the uh, max input for the power station, which is currently 60 watts. Maybe 100 watts would have been um, even better, better, better than 60 watts. But uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, you can recharge this uh, power station using a solar panel. And as long as you have the uh, right cable, which is a DC cable, um, you can basically use any solar panel to recharge the unit. Uh, okay, everybody. So just to uh, wrap up this review for the Greasel T300 power station, I just want to talk real quick about the build quality of the power station. It is a well-built unit. It's just mostly made of plastic, just like any power, just like most power stations are made of plastic. But with that said, you're not going to want to drop the unit, and you're not going to want to expose the power station to any water because either of those two things will damage the unit. And uh, down in the description below, I will have a product link um, for the power station uh, in case you wanna look at the price and you're thinking about purchase, purchasing the power station. I don't usually mention the price of products in videos because I don't wanna mislead you guys in case the price changes, which for a lot of products, the price does fluctuate quite a bit. And uh, also down in the description, I will have a link to the written article review for the power station in case you wanted wanted to check that one out as well all right uh and that there it is that is the grease lt300 
portable power station with a 330 watt max output and a 288 watt hour power capacity. And uh, I will see you guys on the next review. All right. Goodbye.